That was Ben Chu. Now, in a moment, we'll hear from a Conservative MP who took his northern seat in 2017. But first, I'm joined by the Labour MP for Wigan, Lisa Nandy, who's been seen as a potential leadership uh, candidate. And Lisa, your own experience, when you were campaigning this time round, were people blaming Labour for local government cuts? Were you being punished for what was happening in your neighbourhood, as it were? I think there was definitely an element of that around the country. I mean, in Wigan, it was slightly different because our council very quickly got ahead of that and launched something called The Deal, which was about working with local residents in order to work out what we safeguarded and protected, mm. the libraries, for example, and what we would have to do differently by getting residents involved in things like litter picks and uh, volunteering at those libraries when we had to cut back on the staffing hours. So it was a bit different, but that was one element of it. Actually, as your film showed, the roots of this go back much, much further than that. I mean, broadly, the five seats hardest hit by austerity, um, Barnsley, Wakefield, Doncaster, uh, Don Valley, they all went Tory. So somehow, maybe not Wigan, obviously you kept it, but somehow those MPs were being told that they had let down their communities. People saw it on a very local level rather than a national level. I'm not sure that's quite right, actually. I think for a, in a lot of the, the places that you just mentioned, I have friends who were standing there and campaigning there. And um, what we tended to find, actually, was that people were very supportive of their local MP. Mm. But on the whole, they felt that the system just wasn't working for them. And more often than not, when they looked at Labour's offer, although they liked some of the things that we were saying, they were worried about the prospects of a Labour government, our ability to deliver it, and whether we might, given that we were promising so much to people who've lost a lot over the last 20, 30 years, whether we might actually make that worse. So what do you do now? You've got this Conservative Party that's campaigned in a very different way to 2017. They have parked their tanks on your lawn. They're not talking about austerity, so you can't fight them on austerity. You can't fight them on cuts or, or reduce public services or spending. How do you find your message then in terms of what, what Labour is offering differently? Well, the first thing we have to do after an election in which we suffered a shattering defeat, the scale of which took everyone by surprise, including people like me who've been saying for a long time that this is coming. First thing we have to do is hear what people are telling us. They've told us in towns, those small towns, not just in the north, but in the Midlands, in the south, um, in Wales and in Scotland, they've told us for a long time that the system isn't working for them and that we're not listening. We have to go and listen. So on Monday, for example, I'm going to Ashfield with our candidate there, Natalie Fleet, and the former MP, Gloria Di Piero, not to tell people that we know how to fix the problems in their lives, but to ask them but what they'd like us to do. If you've been an MP for years, you must have been listening. I mean, it can't come as a surprise to you what people are saying. You must have done that listening already, haven't you? So in most of the towns that you had on your film, the picture is relatively similar to what's happened in Wigan. So we lost those jobs in the mines, the factories, the mills, in industry. Uh, 30, 40 years ago, and we never replaced them. They were replaced with low-paid jobs, courier delivery firms, call centres that didn't pay enough to live on. It offered very little future for our young people, and so the young people have had to leave to look for opportunities. And what you've got instead is people growing old in those towns stranded hundreds of miles away from their children and grandchildren. That is what accounts for the level of anger. I understand that, but and the, the, the story of the mines, though, is, is 30 years, 40 years old, and at some point, doesn't Labour, doesn't the next leader have to say we've we've listened but we also understand where leadership comes from sure. we have to have a position sure on... but, le but leadership starts with respect and it starts with listening to what people have told us and what they've told us uh, in many towns across the country, including mine, is that we compounded that by doing what one of the people on your film was arguing mm. for, which is investing in cities in the hope that the benefits would trickle out to surrounding towns. Now, there are two problems with that. One, it's an economic model that's failed. You only have to look at our high streets because to see... Because it just takes everyone out of the town. Because it sucks people the out of the town, as in Oldham with the tram extension. It sucks people out of the town into the cities rather than bringing those good jobs back. You have to invest in infrastructure, transport, uh, digital and investing in the skills of young people there and then the business money and the public sector money can flow into those places if you contrast somewhere like Barnsley with somewhere like Silicon Valley where their federal government has been able to drive investment because they have real power to bring in tough environmental regulations and cut taxes for firms who invest you don't have that, though. that we don't have, have those that. powers and though their young people are designing the battery technology of the future our young people are assembling solar panels for the minimum wage let me ask you about the PL because we saw some pretty visceral, brutal statements this evening. Do you think Corbyn should go straight away? 
No, look, I think we have to learn the lessons of what's just happened and I think we have to have a serious debate about what comes next. Because a lot of we... people talking about learning lessons. You saw your colleagues who just said, why is he still there? Well, because we have to have a leadership contest, is the honest truth. And we have to, within that contest, we have to have a debate you need about where we go next. You need leadership contest. No, but we, we, need some, we, we need a structure in place in order to move us forwards. And if we, we, look, we have to strike the right balance. We've got local elections coming up in May. We cannot afford to be looking inwards to ourselves when we need you to be looking what Mary out to Cray the said. But we also need to take a bit of time to get this right. My honest assessment of this is that that traditional coalition that Labour has held, the Lewishams and the Lees, that is now under threat like never before. This is our last chance with many uh, parts of the country, including mine, and we have to get this right because it's not so much rebuilding the red wall, but we have to rebuild that bridge that connects one part of our coalition to the other and make sure that we can speak for both. On Sunday you said you were seriously considering the leadership. Has that hardened now? Do you think that... This is a leadership bid now from you. I mean, I've had more discussions with people and I think that there is uh, seriously considering is absolutely right. Um, I'm going... <laughs> I'm not going to drag you out, am No, I? but I think, I do honestly think this I mean, you, we'd be surprised if you didn't now run. Is that fair? So, well, you know, put it however you like. The truth is that I have just been through the worst election that I have ever fought, where people were viscerally angry with us on the doorsteps. They said, you are not listening. I am not going to turn around to those people and say, I know what the problem is. I know how to fix it and I am the right person to do it. I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. And if I genuinely believe that I can understand the route to regaining the trust of lifelong Labour voters who felt that they not only couldn't vote Labour, but actually voted Tory this time round, then yes, of course I would do it. It would be a duty of anyone who was in that position to put themselves forward. Do you think Seamus Milne and Kerry Murphy have to go now? We saw Nick Timothy and Fiona Hill went straight away uh, and, and may actually stayed as leader. Do you think the advisers right at Corbyn's side still have a place? No, I, I'm not going to get into attacking people who are paid to work for the Labour Party. With the Labour Party, we treat our staff properly and it's not appropriate at all to have a go at people who work for us. Most of the people who work for us are are people who have given up their lives, uh, that time with their families for the last few years in order to try and get a Labour government elected. The truth is that all of us at the top of the Labour Party have to have some humility about what happened, collectively have to own the responsibility for this, and most of all, stop picking fights with each other and work together to work out how we move forward and how we win back trust in parts of the world like mine. Lisa Nandy, thanks very much. Well, as I said, one of the Conservative MPs